gentlemen, welcome to Buckingham Radio's production of... Terrible Tudors, gorgeous Georgians, slimy Stuarts, small Victorian, woeful wars, ferocious fights, stingy castles, daring knights, horrors that defy description, cutthroat council, bull Egyptian, vicious Vikings, cruel crime, punishment from ancient times, Roman rotten, rank and ruthless, cavemen, savage, fierce and tubeless, groovy Greeks, brainy sages, mean and miss in middle ages, gory stories, we do that, and your host are talking rats, the past is no longer a mystery, welcome to Horrible History. It was great being a Roman, but it wasn't glamorous. We didn't even have toilet paper. Have you ever wondered if there was an alternative to wiping your bottom with your hands? Well, now there is. You need to try a new sponge on a stick. Simply put the sponge in water and wipe again and again. <coughs> yes, it's that easy with new sponge on a stick. Yes, sponge on a stick. It's number one for number two. Sponges available from all eating market stalls and stickers available from all eating trees. It's true. Romans have some pretty funny ways of keeping clean. Hi, honey, I'm home. Pooey! Do you suffer from body odour? Do you smell like a horde of barbarians have died in your armpits? Then you need... The new ice cool blast of Viper deodorant. Viper's powerful deodorizing powder is made by catching a viper, killing it, and grinding its bones. Ow! Hi, honey, I'm home. Mmm, darling, you smell wonderful. Thanks. Viper deodorant takes the bite out of body odor. Oh dear, he's dead. Warning catching vipers may result in death which makes you smell even worse. Always read the label. Vile Victorians! Listeners may like to know that all the slang in the following sketch is genuine Victorian slang. Good day. I missed to get the peelers! Uh, not today, thank you. The peelers, the crashers. Quick, someone's kidnapped me spangled. I do have a pattern acquaintance with the language of street, and I believe this chap is in need of some assistance. Go ahead, young fellow. I need the peelers, mister! I've been kidnapped. They've taken me spangle. Ah, yes, I understand. You would like us to make contact with the police, as someone has pickpocketed his money. Oh, good grief. Tell us exactly what happened. Well, I was going past the pan. He was passing the workhouse. When this snick fadger, coin thief, took me spangle! Stole his money. At first, I thought he was just a doddy. He believed this man was just an idiot. Then I thought he was a foggle hunter. A handkerchief thief. Turned out he was more interested in the kettle and tackle. He was after his watch and chain. I tried to yaffle, sir. Honestly, I did before I got a ding on the coconut. Oh, yes. I think I understand. You're saying you tried to scream before he savagely hit you on the head. Oh, you're really picking this up. Well, we must do something to help. Young man, take this handkerchief pocket watch, and this modest wallet of money. I hope this goes in some way to help you get back on your feet. Thanks, fellas! Question. What was invented by a Victorian called Sir Robert Peel? A. The toilet. B. The sponge on a stick. Or C. Policeman. Don't be stupid. The answer is policemen. There was so much crime, Sir Robert Peel invented policemen, known as the Peelers, after him. Did you know that Victorian motor cars could travel at the mind-boggling speed of, wait for it, four miles per hour? Ooh. A man would walk in front of the car with a red flag to warn people crossing the road of their impending doom. It was a good job, apart from when the car was travelling downhill. Hmm. And when the car was trying to climb up a hill, the job itself became totally impossible. In 1896, when the speed limit was increased to, wait for it, 14 miles per hour. Oh. Grubs up. It's ready, steady, feast. (laughs) 
and our first guest is Tudor Peasant Bertha. Please welcome Bertha the Peasant. <laughs> Bertha, what's your first ingredient? A turnip. Um, that's not going to be very nice on its own. What else have you bought? I never turn it. Um, and what on earth are you going to make? Today I'm going to make turnip soup, then roast turnip, followed by turnip crumble, followed by rickets, scurvy and malnutrition. Let's meet our second guest, Tudor aristocrat Earl Richard Scarsbrook. What have you brought with you? I brought a whole salmon. Yes. A swan. And? A wild boar. What else? A horn to the finest venison. Uh-huh. And a pie. What's in that pie? Just starlings. Oh, so what are you going to make? I'm going to make baked salmon, pig stuffed with swan and a whole roast deer, followed by bloatiness and a nasty case of gout and life-threatening diabetes. Hey, you should eat more veg. Yes, I suppose I could do with more vegetables. I'll take the turnips. Oi, they're mine. I love turnips. I love turnips too. I really love turnips. Isn't that a bit mean, stealing their turnips like that? Nonsense. They can have the scraps. After the dogs have finished with them, it will be just like Christmas. Only better. That's all from this week's episode of Ready, Steady, Feast. And now, the science bit. Diabetes and gout are diseases which can be caused by eating too much rich food. It's thought that Henry VIII had both of them when he died, and I can believe that. Henry's food was so rich, it probably had its own bank account. <laughs> and if you think our eating habits are horrible, you should check out some of our Tudor beauty treatments. Your sulfur and lead, but it will make her hair lovely and blonde. It will make your hair fall out, but that's Tudor fashion for you. Shut up. I also have a number of add ons which are proving very popular. Your very own ponytail from an actual pony. Oh, I'll have that one. I mean, they look fantastic and they keep the flies away too. Totally. Oh, now, Mary. I can't help noticing your freckles. You know, they're very unfashionable in Tudor times, like so unfashionable. Are they? OMG! But don't worry, there's a new sulphur treatment which will literally burn them off. Uh, that sounds a little bit painful to me. Oh, but it's ever so popular. Oh, okay then. We can disguise the scarring with a new line of Tudor makeup that's just come in. It was all natural ingredients. It's lead and vinegar. Shut up! Uh, my skin is quite sensitive. Oh, don't worry. And now try new Belladonna. It really make your eyes sparkle, like totally sparkle. But it's deadly poisonous. It is well winging. I think the Belladonna's made me go blind. Where's the exit? <laughs> Ow! Blue my neck. Hysterical hairdressers. Because we're worth it. Totally! Rotten Romans Part 2. Even Rotten Hello again. When we Romans arrived in Britain about 2,000 years ago, we found it was full of Celts, and they were a really savage bunch. <laughs> what you've done to the garden. Well, we like it. I love the severed heads on spikes. It's a traditional Celtic thing. I love it. It's low maintenance and it wards off the burglars. I can see that, yes. Well, I mean, we needed to do something nice with them. You know, the shed is full of severed heads. 
Oh, it's Alan. He's always bringing them back from battle. Yes, my bill's just the same. He brought home three just last week. Oh, have yours got any magical powers? Well, it's just that I've got this one head that utters prophecies. I've heard about those. What does it say? Oh, it's a bit vague, to be honest. Bad things afoot, dark days beckon, things like that, really. I mean, ask him if it's the right day to put the washing out. You won't get a straight answer. Still, it's nice for me to have a bit of a chat while I'm doing the weeds. Evening, ladies. Hi, Alan. I've got a surprise for you. Oh, whatever could it be? It's not another severed head, is it? It's a pure gold necklace with ruby and jade. Oh, well, that's a... that's lovely. Thank you, Alan. Not really, it's a severed head. Oh, now that's more like it. Thank you. Ugh, horrible. Imagine that, showing off a collection of severed heads. Maybe you could collect the whole set by swapping them with your friends. Moodly Riddle Time again for our fairy tale series where the stories are retold in different historical settings. It was a terrible time for the people of Hamlin, for the whole city was infested with rats. Oh, there's rats everywhere. Oh. Just then, a mysterious stranger appeared. I, the Pied Piper, shall rid of you of these pests, but I warn you the price will be high. Unfortunately, this is the Middle Ages, so the rats are all carrying the Black Death. <laughs> <coughs> and so, instead of luring the rats away from Hamlin, the Pied Piper also caught the Black Death and died. <coughs> The Black Death is what they called the plague in the Middle Ages. It killed off one third of the population of Europe. More than 25 million people. That's more people than I've got fleas. Ooh, that's itchy. Bring, Bring out, out your dead. dead. Bring, Bring out, out your dead. dead. Here, will you take my boat, will ya? Plague, was it? You will give him a proper burial, won't you? Of course, I'll check him in the pit with all the others. Oh good, it's what he would have wanted. It's worrying though, this plague thing. I mean, where does it come from? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. The answer is... <laughs> Caligula himself died when he was poisoned by his niece. But not all ruthless rulers got on so well with their family. Our guest today had a series of major wars named after him. He was a general, an emperor. He is still the most famous Frenchman in history. Please welcome Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> Napoleon, this is your reign. <laughs> oh, ciao, ciao, grazie, grazie, grazie. Wait till I tell my family about this. They go crazy, crazy they go. Oh, sorry, you're the French Emperor Napoleon? Si, si, I am Napoleon. I'm the big chief in it. But your accent, you sound kind of Italian. Ah, well, no, see, si. you notice that you are a smart girl. We get on good. Maybe we go for some pizza, maybe some pasta. You like it, the pasta? I was expecting you to be French. Oh, si, si, I get that all the time. I'm from Corsica. In it is kind of near France, kind of near Italy. Well, whatever. Your achievements are beyond question. Si, grazie, Bill. As general, you defend the Spanish, the Venetians and the Prussians, the Russians, the Austrians, to name just a few. So it's not surprising that many important people wanted to join us tonight. So please welcome the King of Holland. Oh, ciao, ciao, Napoleon. How come you've got the same accent? He's my brave, innit? I conquer the countries and give him the crown. It's a birthday present. I can't buy him socks. He's got a wool allergy. Okay, let's bring out some more guests because this isn't a family reunion show. So please can we welcome the King of Spain, the Duchess of Tuscany, the Prince of Canino, the Queen of Naples, the Prince of Westphalia. Hang on, what's going on? These are my brothers and sisters in it. I conquered all the countries, so I give it to my family. 
His empire is a family business. Look, our last guest certainly isn't a family member, so no surprises on the accent here. Please welcome the greatest English general of his day, the Duke of Wellington. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, and a fine day it is so. If it's not, may I be sent straight to the hell to live with all the nasty leprechauns down there. Well, my name's not Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington. You're Irish? Quite so. Born and bred on the Emerald Isle. Fiddly diddly dee. So let me get this straight. England's great general is actually Irish, and France's great emperor is actually Corsican. Si, si, bene, bene. You maybe want some pasta? Napoleon Bonaparte, this is your very confusing reign. Oh, grazie, grazie, grazie. Anyone want the pasta? Take your hand out of your jacket. You look silly. <laughs> were the most famous warriors in all of ancient Greece. And it was here in Thermopylae that we fought our most famous battle. Right, there you go, Spartan. Prepare for war. Excellent. Next. Hello. Right, there's your shield. Nice. Your helmet. Ooh. Lovely. And the rest? What rest? That's it. This is all I get. Of course it's all you get. This is true Spartan armour. But I feel naked. Look at that shield, it hardly covers my nipples. Well, it's a uh, one size fits all. Can I at least have something to protect my back? You've got your cloak. Oh, lovely, so I can get impaled by swords, spears and arrows, but at least I won't get sunburnt. Brilliant. Enough, it is an honor to die in battle. I mean, what actually are our chances here? How many of us are there? You're a part of 300 Spartan warriors who will fight the Persians at Thermopylae. What? You're not scared. I'm not fighting. Mummy! We've been listening, listening to Horrible Histories Radio starring Owen McCardle, Fiddly Dee, Gavin Worsley, Watch Out, and Lucas Mikan, Grazie Grazie, Olivia Cregine, Mia Coco, Isla Turner, Kiss McConnell Vera, Me Too, Arthur Owen, Don't Be an Idiot, Diana Wilson, Shut Up, Alana Ingham, Totally. Anna Ridgway, Charlie Burkett, good day. And directed by Alex Duncan. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Terrible Tudors, gorgeous Georgians, Siamese too, as far Victorian. Woeful wars, ferocious fights, stingy castles, daring knights. Horrors that defy description, cutthroat council, bull Egyptian, vicious Vikings, cruel crime. Punishment from ancient times. Roman rotten, rank and ruthless. Cavemen, savage, fierce and toothless. Groovy Greeks, brainy sages. Mean and mean in Middle Ages. Gory stories, we do that. And your host, a talking rat. The past is no longer a mystery. Welcome to Horrible Histories.